North Korea has a prime opportunity to convey through the UN officials that North Korea is ready to go to war tonight. news alert for you. It's not a matter of if, but when we go to war. North Korea's brand new chilling warning as the U.S. Air Force makes a show of force over the Korean Peninsula. Tensions continue on the Korean Peninsula even as a top UN official visits Pyongyang. North Korea says a large joint military drill between South Korea and the United States has made an outbreak of war on the peninsula an established fact. According to a statement issued through state-run KCNA news agency, a spokesman said the remaining question is when will the war break out? We do not wish for a war, but shall not hide from it. The regime is issuing the warning as a U.S. B-1B aerial bomber flew over South Korea as part of Vigilant ACE, that's this week's joint U.S.-South Korean aerial exercise, involving hundreds of warplanes, including an unusually large number of the latest generations of American stealth fighter jets. It also came as a senior U.N. diplomat, Under Secretary General for Political Affairs Jeffrey Feltman, held meetings with North Korean Foreign Minister Ri Yong-ho in Pyongyang Thursday. Now, we have already been seeing North Korea pulling some diplomatic strings, inviting a senior UN official to the country's capital for talks. Uh, he's been there for the past few days. Jeffrey Feltman, who is the UN's Under Secretary General for Political Affairs, met with the regime's Foreign Minister Ri Yong-ho on Thursday, although details on their meeting have yet to be revealed. North Korea state-run media did reveal, though, that the visiting envoy discussed UN assistance and operations in the country, along with other matters of mutual concern. And with the UN envoy wrapping up his four-day trip today, focus is on whether or not Kim Jong-un will continue to avoid meeting with high-profile visitors. It wouldn't be too much of a surprise if Feltman returns without bumping into Kim, as uh, the North Korean leader has shunned the Chinese president's special envoy. He did that last month. Good morning. Well, yes, North Korea is raising its objections to those ongoing U.S. and South Korean military exercises. The government in Pyongyang has upped its rhetoric, saying that war on the Korean peninsula may be inevitable. Now, these comments come after a U.S. supersonic bomber flew over South Korea yesterday in a show of force as part of that large week-long military exercise. More than 200 aircraft taking part, including American fighter jets. Now, South Korea's military says this is to demonstrate a capability to respond to any threat from the north. A colossal Seoul Washington combined air force drills wrapped up on Friday. During the five days span, the Allies went through various wartime scenarios, including targeting North Korea's key nuclear and missile facilities. Kim Yun bin helps paint a clearer picture of the skill and effectiveness of the vigilant ace exercise. Seoul and Washington have been conducting a massive air combat drill known as Vigilant Ace. The five-day exercise is the largest ever combined Air Force drill between the two allies, involving 230 warplanes and around 12,000 personnel. Two dozen U.S. self fighter jets took part in the drills, six of them F-22s, six of them F-35As, as well as a dozen F-35Bs, marking the first time the highly advanced jets have cruised the skies of uh, Korea at the same time. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un is said to be the most afraid of stealth fighters, as they can easily get past the regime's air defenses undetected. 
Other U.S. assets include two B-1B bombers and six Growler electronic warfare jets, as well as dozens of F-15s and F-16s. South Korea has deployed 90 fighter jets, including its F-15 and F-50 fighters. The U.S. also flew two B-1B supersonic bombers over Korea for two consecutive days on Wednesday and Thursday, carrying out bombing drills over the Yellow Sea near North Korea and China. It is unusual for the U.S. to send the bombers, stationed in Guam, for two days in a row. Their exercise was simulated to target key North Korean facilities, including nuclear and missile sites. These bilateral exercises that we're conducting, the largest in the world of any bilateral exercise, are a critical component to our readiness in this area. The president wants us ready. The military want to be ready. And I think these exercises ensure that we're able to deliver. I've been so impressed today by what I've seen. Great men and women working here, working their hearts out to be at the ready. And I've been thoroughly impressed with their effort and their enthusiasm. provocations could be in the pipelines as it tries to gain bargaining power with the United States. That's the assessment coming from the Defense Ministry during a year-end meeting with senior commanders nationwide. Defense Chief Song Young Moo pointed out Pyongyang regards its weapons programs as a means of survival. He also highlighted the possibility of tactical provocations by the regime, such as trespassing the northern limit line, the de facto maritime border between the two Koreas meaning artillery attacks or cyber terrorism to disrupt international events cannot be counted out. The minister promised Seoul's military will be fully prepared for any circumstances as it readies to host next year's Winter Games. Tufts University Korean Studies Assistant Professor Sung Yoon Lee told VOA that despite the heightened tensions, the North Korean rhetoric is typical bluster. Right now, it makes sense for North Korea to ratchet up the rhetoric again and to create war paranoia because you have, right now as we speak, a high-ranking UN official visiting North Korea, which is a rare occasion, the Under Secretary General for Political Affairs, number two man at the UN, is in North Korea. The last time such a person of such position was in Pyongyang was back in February 2010. What that means is North Korea has a prime opportunity to convey through the UN official to the US and to the world that North Korea is ready to go to war tonight. Why? Because of repeated threats by the Trump administration. Therefore, the messenger will be inclined to tell the world that the US should de-escalate as to thwart war, which basically means making more concessions to North Korea. Sun Yung Lee of Tufts University does not see Feltman's trip as a prelude to UN mediation, but rather as setting the stage for another possible provocation. Lee said that one month after Feltman's predecessor, Lynn Pascoe, visited North Korea in 2010, Pyongyang was blamed for destroying a South Korean corvette and killing 46 sailors. He said it is quite possible that before his traditional New Year's Day address, Kim Jong-un will engage in yet another provocative act. 